Hi everyone and welcome back to a new art journal layout. Today it's all about Christmas. I have been working on my disc bound journals lately. I have a 6x6 sizes and custom made ones like the one that I'm using today which is 8x8. The page I'm working on is thick watercolor paper and first I apply some water. Then I can apply my shimmer sprays by Ranger. I like to apply water at first on my page which helps the colors blend nicely and then I'm applying my shimmer sprays by Dilutions. The colors I'm using are flesh slime and cut grass. And remember to wipe the nozzle before you put the caps back on. I've been having these shimmer sprays for over a year now. They have mica inside and they never clogged on me. After quickly drying it, I'm going to add some splashes on top. I am not introducing any other color than the two colors that I already have on my page. Since I don't want my background to look too busy, this way my focal points are going to stand out later on. Now this is completely dry and it is really shiny. Now I'm going to do some more techniques on top of my background to make it uh, look more interesting and add some visual texture. For that I'm using an older uh, stencil by Tim Holtz that has uh, lovely words about Christmas and I'm just going over it with a baby wipe. The spray at the background is actually like watercolor so it is going to react with the wetness of my baby wipe. You can also just spray water over the stencil if you want to do that technique. Now I am going to add some of the darker spray over different areas. And again this is not a new color, it's the cut grass that I used for my background. And here is a close-up look on how it looks at the moment. Now I always like to add some uh, darker areas around my uh, projects just to frame them a little bit. For that I'm going to use one of my Distress Oxide inks. This is Pine Needles. I'm using my blending tool to go all around the edges. This is a great tip uh, that I go back to again and again, creating a darker frame for my pages. I think that um, it gives a more finished look and at the same time by darkening up the edges, you draw the eye at the center of the page and look how this darker border actually made the center look brighter. Now I'm going to do some stamping, for that I will be using this darkroom door stamp set. This is a rubber stamp and as you can see it comes all together. You need to use your scissors to separate all the images. This set is called pine cones and uh, you need to use really sharp scissors like I'm doing here to separate everything. It's really easy to do and just put them back in the box where they belong. So you have uh, a nice and neat uh, area to store them. For my page today I'm going to use the two stamps with uh, the branches. I'm going to start with a larger one. I'm using my pine needles oxide ink which uh, seems appropriate and you will see that I will not get the perfect impression. This is expected as I'm trying to stamp over a very textured watercolor paper. But I really don't mind. I just want to have a first layer of stamping up there. You will see that I'm going to build it up as I go. Now I switch to the smaller stamp and this time I'm going with a darker ink. This is Olive Archival Ink and I'm using my stamping platform so that I can stamp again and again on the same spot to get a better impression since this time I'm building the second layer of my pine needles and I need them to be more prominent. So here's how it looks once I finished stamping. You can totally tell the two layers, the lighter one that looks like a shadow and the darker one that is more vibrant. And if you follow my videos you probably know already which is the last step on my backgrounds. I always like to add some splashes. So here I'm using gesso that I have watered down and I'm using a very thin brush to add all my splashes that are going to look as if they are snow. And here is a close-up look to this shiny, wonderful, festive background, perfect for any art journaling for Christmas. You can add any element that you like on top of it. I will go with ornaments. And this is called Whimsy Decor. It's a new die designed by Tim Holtz for Sizzix. I am going to pick all three of the ornaments included in this die. And there are also tiny little uh, pieces that you can use to decorate them. There are actually 22 dies in this stamp set. 
And as I'm trying to pick up uh, what I'm going to use from these dies, I need to let you know that there is actually a sale that is running at the moment. And uh, all the C6 products, as well as all the Ranger products, are on sale. And a big sale, like 20% up to 50% off. So make sure to visit my blog to find all about this sale. But of course, if you don't have these dies, you can always work um, with any ornaments that you probably have, or you can even draw your own. Now, to have the same look and feel for my ornaments as the background, I'm doing the same techniques on watercolor paper. So again, I used uh, shimmer sprays, and this is uh, post box red. And again, I used the same stencil as I did for my background, and I'm going over this red paper that I created with a baby wipe. So same techniques like the background to create the same look and feel. And the fun thing is that since I used shimmer sprays here, the ornaments that I'm going to cut out of this paper are going to be nice and shiny. So I'm going to place the dies on top, making sure that I pick up some of that uh, uh, pattern that I have created at the back. And I'm going to run them through my big shot. And for the little elements that are going to be used to decorate these ornaments, I'm going to use this metallic gold cardstock. I'm going to place all of them there and I'm just going to run them through to cut them out. Now, of course, with these ornaments, you can go really crazy with different colors, but I decided to keep everything quite simple in terms of coloring and just go with traditional colors for Christmas, like green, red and touches of yellow. So here was Ginger saying hi and now I'm allowed to run it through my big shot. Now minking up the edges with my blending tool here and some distress oxide ink just to darken them up a little bit and to get rid of that white core that shows up at the edge. Then I can uh, just use my white glue and stick all the little pieces that I have cut out to decorate my ornaments. Now, as I told you, there are actually 22 dies, so tons of little borders and um, embellishments to decorate these ornaments. I decided to go quite simple here, so I haven't cut out everything. I'm just using a couple of touches of gold on every ornament. And here they are, all finished. I also have some golden thread. I'm now going to play with my ornaments and decide where I want them to go on my page. And once I'm happy with the placement, I can then uh, stick, cut out uh, three pieces of thread and just stick them down. I'm going to secure them down with just a piece of scotch tape. This is not going to show as I will cover it up with my ornaments later on. And I'm also going to use a scotch tape at the back of the page to secure the end of the strings. And I'm trying to make sure that these strings look nice and straight. To stick down my ornaments I used foam tape at the back to add some dimension. And since I'm working on a disc bound journal I can add it enough dimension without worrying that my book is going to end up too bulky and it's not going to close. After all, I can always switch to bigger discs. So I'm placing my last ornament on my page and all that's left to do is to add a quote. For that I will go with Merry Christmas and I am going to use the same stencil that I used for the background. And if you notice, there is the word that says Christmas and another one that says Merry. So I'm going to combine those. But before I apply paste over them, I need to make sure that I'm not going to make a mess. So by using my purple tape, I'm going to mask off the rest of the areas, leaving only the words that I want to work with. I'm going to go over the stencil with my spatula and I'm applying gold paste. If you don't have gold paste, you can always use your uh, Versamarking and just apply gold embossing powder. But although this looks quite milky at the moment, you will see that it's going to dry nice and shiny at the end photos. Now once that the word was uh, dry, I went ahead and did the same thing for the word Mary. And here is the finished project for today. Don't forget that there is a sale on all Sizzix products and all the Ranger products, so make sure to check it out on my blog. You will find there a full list of all the supplies that I use, as well as below the video on YouTube. 
Here are some close-up photos on the project that I made for today. I hope you had fun that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for visiting today and I'll see you all next time.